My name is Howard Williams. I grew up in Pueblo, Colorado and went to University of Colorado. And then I went to the University of Michigan for grad school in English. I've been in New York now for 23 years. I moved here to live with Michael Alhanti, and who died two years after I got here. Um, when I was in college, and when I first moved here, I was very, very interested in drama and theater, and we went to all sorts of operas and theater and movies, sorts of things like that. I was originally going to opera when I came to New York, and I've always been interested in opera and theater, but Michael was an opera singer. He was in the course at City Opera and had some roles in City Opera. I met him while he was on tour in Michigan. Brad had started singing in the course at the Met, which was an amazing thing to go there and see him there at the Met. Largely worked for technology companies, which has paid well and allowed me to do things and go places and learn things and stay up with technology. But largely I've always led a life interested in the arts outside of my work. So outside of that I've always gone to galleries, gone to shows. So 17 years ago I met Todd Mick. He's from Toronto and he had just moved here. We met at a gay leather bar on the West Side Highway, the Spike, that's no longer there and started dating and dated for a while and things were going very well. He's much more grounded sort of in the real world I think than I am sometimes. He's less interested perhaps in the arts but goes with me to almost all the museums and a lot of the plays and things that I go to. But he does not go to the more avant-garde and the more advanced things that I'm interested in. And that's fine. Early on I drug him to a three-hour puppet drama about the blood crisis in Canada with AIDS blood from the Red Cross. And that was kind of the end. It was pushing things just a little too far. Um, and I thought it was pretty interesting. I'm very fond of popular culture. I'm the mixture of high and low. A postmodern belief that there's no difference between high art and low art I think is central to my belief. Since I've moved to New York, I've been involved with the Second Tuesday Lecture Series at the Lesbian and Gay Community Center. Over the years, we've had a lot of famous people who've talked. Catherine Opie, all the big authors, Michael Cunningham, Alan, Alan, Alan Hollinghurst, um, famous artist Catherine Opie, Glenn Lignon, uh, politicians Al Sharpton. I'm very thrilled. I love Warhol and I was very thrilled that a couple of years ago we got Holly Woodlawn who was one of the Andy Warhol superstars who came and talked. It makes me feel like I have a little bit of a connection with the Warhol world living here in New York. I also joined a book club at the Gay and Lesbian Center and have now read a book a month for every year that I've been here and for the past 10 or 15 years I've also been sort of the chairperson of that and helped select the books that we read. I've also been reviewing books for the Lambda Literary. That's a big part of my life also just because I was an English major and I still read a lot and pay a lot of attention to popular literature. Before I worked before we actually had a book club at work and we talked about the book for exactly 10 minutes before we started drinking. We met in a bar. Um, whereas at the center we regularly talk for two hours about the book and people have very interesting ideas. Different people see things between the galleries and the museums. I really like going to the beach. I didn't discover the beach until I was an adult and I started going to Fire Island 20 years ago. One of the big things that happens at Fire Island is tea. Every afternoon they have tea dance. Then you have gangs of gay men who wander from one outdoor bar to another outdoor bar to another outdoor bar listening to top name DJs and that's something that I've really enjoyed. I am a horrible dancer and everybody acknowledges this but I really enjoy doing it and I enjoy watching everybody else sort of do it and there's nothing better than even if I don't fit in I just think it's terrific sort of seeing all these incredibly handsome men dancing and they're all well built and, and uh, successful and you get to listen to the latest music. For more than five years in Ann Arbor I was the door person at the Nectarine Ballroom on um, their gay nights and I wound up doing it for absolute years and it wound up becoming sort of a part of who I was there. And um, it was fun. I, and the best part it was is because I like popular music so much and popular culture. I got to listen every night, twice a week, to the music, to the latest sort of dance music, and it was always terrific. And when I first moved to New York, on Friday and Saturday nights, you went to the Roxy, which was the uh, former roller skating rink over on the west side. And it was huge. They would pack 2,000 people in, and there were the sorts of places to go. 
We don't have the big clubs like that anymore. Everything's now a much smaller club. And people still go out a little bit, but you socialize with friends. And there aren't the big dance clubs that we used to go to. There's some big parties that go on every so often, but generally you dance in smaller clubs and you go someplace and meet with your friends and drink. When I moved to Chelsea, Chelsea was still a little bit of an edgy neighborhood. There were still some very sketchy bodegas on 8th Avenue. There were lots of closed stores. There were horrible diners and some really questionable stores all the way around. But as the gays moved in, once again, it got nicer. It got fixed up. The horrible bodegas all remodeled themselves. And the gay people again have moved on. They've moved up to the next neighborhood, which is Hell's Kitchen. That's now where all the big bars and cool places to hang out in moderately priced restaurants and places where gay people are living. And Chelsea has become very, very stable. The, all of the brownstones have now been remodeled and now have very nice families in them. We have a Bye Bye Baby on 7th Avenue so you can buy children's clothes and cribs. The restaurants have become a little too upscale. It's sort of, we can't eat there regularly. We, I had a number of guests who came to our house and would sit on the stoop of our building. We have a terrific stoop and pick up boys and you could just sit and watch the boys walk up and down the streets walking to the clubs. You'd walk up and down 8th Avenue and it was like an advertisement for gay life. Everybody was attractive and smiling and there was no hint of homophobia. Everybody was well adjusted. You'd see couples and groups of gay guys sort of walking. And then little by little, once again, they move to Hell's Kitchen and it just, you see fewer. You still, when you cross 14th Street, you still can tell it's a little bit gayer than the village. The village, I don't think, will ever be gay again, Christopher Street. Just, it's been so gentrified all the way around that I don't think that'll happen again. Um, okay, sorry. At, like, a certain point, it just stops taking a movie. Oh, sure. It's the, it, the memory. Your memory buffer is filled. Oh, okay. So when you buffer, so it's filming, and it's storing, and it films, and stores it, and it films, and it stores it. But at some point, if it gets too far behind, it the buffer is filled, and so you have to wait for it to ah. to finish filling up the card. Ah. So your camera has two kinds. It has that active dynamic memory. A number of years ago, I was in therapy, and it was going very well. Things were good, and my therapist pointed out that I needed to have a creative outlet since I didn't have a creative job. And so I had always been interested in photography, and so I took, started taking some pictures. That year for Christmas, Todd bought me a digital camera and got pretty good at it. I have a, a perhaps a different kind of aesthetic, and I just think it's great. I spend time doing that. I go on little photo safaris, I call them photo outings, where I go shoot things and I go to places, parts of the neighborhood, parts of New York that I haven't been, neighborhoods I haven't seen shoot things, come back and work on them a little bit. I've never put together a real portfolio or done anything, but it is. It's something very nice to do. It gets me into parts of the city. And started working on urban landscapes and shooting landscapes and shooting things that I saw around the city and shooting abstracts that I found in the architecture. I grew up in Pueblo, Colorado, which is an industrial town, though my dad worked at the steel mill. So I've always been interested or seen industry and industrial settings as something desirable, not undesirable. So I like visiting the industrial parts of town and going to construction sites. One of the things that I've sort of photographed extensively is construction sites. There's something about the temporary nature of them that I like, that there's going to be this today or this week and you'll never see it again because the building will be built, will be finished. I also think there's a lot of sculpture that goes on, unintentional sculpture that goes on at these construction sites where people very carefully arrange materials and things while they're doing it. So some of this looks minimalist. It looks industrial. I'm shooting things that aren't, that there's not specifically a topic, that there's not a, an object in the middle of the frame that you can look at. They are sort of landscapes. They have a tendency to involve industrial, sometimes decaying, sometimes being built sorts of things. And you, there isn't always something you can say, oh, this is a picture of a cow in a field. This is a picture of a castle. I've been in New York now for 23 years and in this apartment essentially since uh, within the first year that I moved here. And now the rent is just going up dramatically and we can't afford to stay here anymore. This will maybe our last year. We're just going to start looking around in Inwood and Astoria because this is going to be a huge change though, a huge shift. 
but it's going to be sort of a sad day when I can't afford this sort of terrific apartment. But I don't think that we're going to be able to maintain this apartment many more years, perhaps another year, but no more than that. And we'll have to move.